Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's now go back in time to the year 1996, the 7th of September. And on this day in history, uh, rapper and hip-hop artist Tupac Shakur um, is fatally shot in a drive-by shooting. Um, this happened at around 11.30 um, p.m. on that day. He and his crew, you know, were driving back and unfortunately they stopped at a red light and he was fatally shot. He was shot um, two in the chest and one in the arm, one in the thigh um, from a 40 caliber round. And um, he died from his wounds six days later. And at the hospital, Shaka was heavily sedated, placed on life support machines. He was ultimately put in a, um, under a medically induced coma um, after he repeatedly tried to get out of bed. Um, at the time of his shooting, an entourage of around 10 um, automobiles were following um, Knight and Shakur's vehicle. So they say that the medical cause of his death was um, respiratory failure, and that's from the fatal gunshot wounds that he had received. It was a very sad you know, incident. The mystery of his murder remains unsolved till today, even though many you know, of the um, rival gangs or rival ra um, other rappers, you know, where in seem to have, you know, been indicted in this particular case. And at the end of the day, people, you know, point fingers to that rivalry, the coast rivalry in the 90s, as one of the reasons for um, Shakur's death. And I think one of the most interesting things that I read about the story is that he requested for um, his body to be um, cremated and the ashes. Um, smoked by members of the outlaws, and that exactly was what happened. You know, I don't know if that's authentic information, but they say his body was cremated. He was sent to the um, group, the outlaws, and they mixed his body with marijuana and smoked it. Oh, good luck to them. Um, <laughs> you know, yes, you know, it was in the height of the East Coast West Coast um, um, war, um, and it was really just a music war that eventually turned into a gang war. Um, or gang war that turned to a musical. I'm not sure which now. Thank God, I stop at whiskey, David. Um, Twitter level. Yeah, you know, oh, but God. you know, there's we, we we you know every now and then seem to be getting in you know there. But I think Nigerians always realize so that never they, get they value there. their We're life happy people. You know, too much. Um, you know, to get <laughs> they drag you on Twitter and that's, and that's it. it. <laughs> you know, um, um, he he had just left. Uh, I think it was Mike Tyson fight that they had left um, that night. Went back to the hotel, had change of clothes, and you know, um, you know, the the things that happen in life that you feel. You know, maybe if I had just done this instead, I probably wouldn't be dead now. You know, there's a couple of times when he probably wouldn't have been at that You'd red be light. dead, so even um, remember that. Um, but he eventually got to that red light. He, they were even stopped by the police for, for playing loud music the same night and driving without plates. You know, they eventually were let go. Um, but, you know, it still happened. Um, there's a couple of people who have been mentioned, you know, as suspects who know, you know, one thing or the other. And you mentioned that, you know, the crime is still unsolved. And I think, I think it's mostly because a lot of people have chosen to not speak. Because um, mm -hmm. I know that there's people who know what happened on that night. Um, and of course, a few months later, you know, there was allegedly a reprisal shooting that led to the death of uh, Notorious B.I.G. These were like the two major um, rappers that were, you know, the faces of the East Coast, West Coast battle. Um, and it's a sad, really, really sad, um, you know, um, um, story, you know, that, you know, the hip hop um, industry lost these two phenomenal legends. Um, at very, very young age. I'm telling you, just 25. Really sad. There were rumors that he wasn't dead, you know, that he was somewhere in Libya or Egypt or someplace. And that he was going to show up someday, but, you know, that's obviously a rumor. Anyway, rest in peace uh, to Tupac Shakur. His music still lives on, still one of the best rappers ever. Now, let's go to um, Egypt in 2005. Um, I'm going to share, first of all, the story on Egypt and then get to talk about the main character in the story. Um, this, you know, on this day, basically, elections were held in Egypt that featured more than one candidate. Um, Hosni Mubarak finally fell, you know, well, you know, went uh, under pressure from the United States and from the West and allowed other candidates to contest with him in an election in 2005. The presidential elections held on this day. Um, he was um, obviously, once again, re-elected for a fifth consecutive six-year term in office. Until recently, Egyptians had only been able to approve or reject a candidate approved or appointed by parliament. And all Egyptians above 18 years are required to vote. There's something in the story. It says here that um, out of the 7, 7 million uh, population in Egypt, which is the largest in the, of the Arab nations, only 32 million votes were registered 
um, um, voters rather were registered, which is actually pretty interesting. It's almost half, or even more than, yeah, almost half um, of the population that were registered to vote compared to where we, what we see here in Nigeria. Um, the election was overseen by Egyptian judges. There were no international observers that were allowed to you know, um, see the election. And of course, it was allegedly marred by um, fraud here and there. Um, Hosni Mubarak got into his fifth six-year term. Now, about Hosni Mubarak, he was in presidency, or he was president of Egypt for almost 30 years. He's only the fourth, just behind Muammar uh, Gaddafi and, and two others, uh, longest seven Arab presidents um, in the world. He got into power in 1981 and eventually left in 2005. Yes, in 2005. Um, furthermore, of course, um, the Arab Spring that started in 2011 were one of the things that also, um, you know, uh, characterized his time as president and his history as a leader. Um, eventually, you know, was arrested after the Arab Spring in 2011. He stepped down actually in 2011. Um, sorry, from 1981 to 2011. So he stepped down in 2011. Um, after 13 days of rioting, was arrested later that year, sentenced to jail along with his sons. Later in 2005, uh, 2015, sorry, there was another court ruling, a retrial rather, that once again sentenced him to jail, where he eventually died in the, the year 2020 at, um, it was 891 when he eventually died. Mm. Um, so yes, he, he basically was that name, the same way Libyans know Muammar Gaddafi and um, 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 the Iraqis knew Saddam Hussein as a person who had been in power forever um, until, of course, you know, the, the um, incidents of the Arab Spring. And I'm sure that if not for the Arab Spring, Hosni Mubarak will probably still be president till now at 91, you yeah. know, or find a way to put his son there, you know, after he leaves. Yeah, but, but today was a historic day for Egyptians. The first time ever they had a chance to actually choose candidates. I mean, before then it was a yes or no referendum, you know, so they had that chance for the first time, September 7th, 20, 2005. 2005. And, you know, Egypt had the first multi-party elections, the first politically competitive elections. And um, yes, that's what happened today in history. Absolutely. Yeah, so stay with us. We'll be right back with our first major conversation regarding the Southeast, the IPOP sit at home order, and counting the economic cost of Ghost Mondays. Stay with us.